Hey guys, uh, so this is not going to be a Game Boy video. This is actually going to be um, something that I've been getting quite a few questions about lately, uh, especially as a result of my battery videos. Um, I get a lot of questions about what battery charger I have and what I use to test batteries. And well, the answer is I have this one. It's this Lito Kala LII 500. Um, and the reason I bought it quite frankly, was because it was cheap. Uh, I was looking specifically for something with individual channels uh, so that I could charge my nickel metal hydride, uh, like the rechargeable AA or AAA batteries with individual channels and not, um, oh yeah, that's right, and not having to charge them in series. Uh, the problem the, the reason, rather, I was looking for that specifically was because not all of my batteries are paired. In some cases, I just have one battery, and without a single battery charger, I had no way of charging or even using those batteries. Uh, well, this solved that problem, and um, it also happened to be compatible with uh, some lithium-ion batteries as well, like 18650s. And one cool feature about this charger too, if you pop those in there, even though the charger is not plugged in, it'll actually boot up and uh, it has a USB port on the back so you can plug in USB cable and charge something. Um, I mean, it's not very practical, I think, who would want to carry around one of these chucked full of 18650s, but you know, it is an option. It does work. Now, I pulled this out of my battery charger and I need to make sure it goes back in the same way. <laughs> or my power supply, rather. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's it's cool. It works. I like it. Um, but I'm sure there are better chargers and I actually do have a few complaints about this model in particular. Um, but again, I knew I knew this stuff going in, so it's not like it surprised me. Um, in particular, it does have a battery testing mode, which is what I use to find out the capacity of a lot of my batteries. Um, but it can only test at 300 milliamp hours, or 300 milliamps, 500 milliamps, 700 milliamps, and 1,000 milliamps, or just one amp. And quite frankly, that is a lot for um, some of the smaller batteries that I'm testing. Uh, for example, and the reason I'm getting to this, the reason I'm talking about this right now is I have a box full of uninsulated batteries, mostly uninsulated. Some batteries are uninsulated, and I need to do a lot of testing of these cells. And for like one of these in particular, this is a 460 milliamp hour battery. Uh, spoiler alert for the video I'm doing, it's actually more than that. But you wouldn't want to test this at an amp. Um, a safe, if you don't have the actual data sheet on a battery, uh, generally you can assume that it is safe to charge or discharge it at a fraction of its C rating. Now its C rating is calculated by its total capacity. So for example, this is a rated 460 milliamp hour battery, so its C rating would be 460 milliamps. Um, so generally the safe discharge rate is half that, uh, so yeah, I can't even do math on the top of my head right now, I'm sorry. Um, and charging would be 1C at 460 milliamp hours, or Jesus, 460 milliamps. It's been a long day at work, I'm just getting home. Um, forgive me for obvious slip-ups when I say milliamp hours and mean milliamps or something of that sort. Um, yes, I know that this is going to stress some of you guys out, but I don't really care. Um, but anyway, I have a lot of batteries to test and I have this charger modded with only one of the channels ready to accept batteries. And here's how I tested my SP batteries. I just have a... Um, the rear housing of an SP shell with one of these like spring terminals hot glued in there and this isn't even out of an SP this is out of like a DS Lite or something um, so it's not quite the right height and I ended up 
cutting holes in it so I could fit DS batteries in here without having to modify the batteries. This is just an aftermarket shell. I don't give a shit about it. But that just plugs in and pop the battery in like that. And as you can see, the charger boots up off that. But anyway, this is the charger I have. If I were to buy another one, uh, or if I were to buy a charger again, I would buy a different one that maybe ha supports modes of less than 300 milliamp hours. Hello. Um, or milliamps. There I go again. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's, it's like 15 bucks. It doesn't come with the 12 volt DC adapter that you need, but if you're like me and you shuck a bunch of Western digital hard drives, chances are pretty good you have one laying around anyway. So, anyway, the reason I wanted to uh, make this video was because I wanted to add a battery plug to the other three channels of this charger so I can try and make a dent in those batteries. Now, I'm just going to talk while I do this. Uh, when I'm testing my batteries, I generally do like three, four, sometimes even five cycles testing just to just to try and rule out some weird uh, flukes or um, you know in case the battery needs to warm up as it were. Um, that's not actually how batteries work, but sometimes uh, the capacity doesn't read right on the first cycle. You, you need to put a few cycles in it before it starts reading accurately, so on and so forth. Um, and if I were to go through that uh, box of batteries in my one channel, you know, doing three or four cycles per battery, you know, it's going to take me two weeks. If I mod the rest of the channels, it's going to take me like four days. Alright, there we go. So once you've got the six screws out, there's this little sticker here that if you break it, it voids your warranty, quote unquote. Um, obviously I've been inside of this and obviously that sticker isn't broken because you can just hinge this off. And the first time I did it, yeah, the adhesive just released from the bottom of the sticker. Not that it really matters that much. And here's all I did. My battery connector is just soldered on to these points. Uh, I did not modify the charger in any way whatsoever. Uh, electrically, it's already compatible. All I did was just add my battery connectors. Now I'm using these cheapo battery connectors and make sure you've got the male end on the charger because the female end goes on the battery. I'm using these because I have them. You can use whatever battery plug you want. Uh, if you've already got a bunch of XT60 plugs, which I do, but these are all on my um, hobby batteries for like my RCs and stuff. And these are all on series cells. Uh, so it has two cells connected, positive, negative. Uh, and this charger only supports single cells, not series cells. So I think having different plugs is perfectly fine since this charger won't support any of my batteries with this plug. Anyway, I have a different charger for that. You could use um, like these cheapo little uh, Game Boy Micro battery plugs that I went over in another video and I will probably be going over again at some point. Uh, but yeah, I'm just using these. I bought them, they were like a couple bucks on AliExpress. They're nothing special and they don't need to be. Um, but I'm just going to do this the same way. We want this up towards the top, otherwise we won't be able to use this uh, spring action because I do still want to be able to charge uh, nickel metal hydride cells and I just want to trim these wires. So it looks like the red one we don't have to trim and the black one we have to cut to about there. And I'm going to pull that out just so I can do all three at the same time. And I have had absolutely zero issues with this thing ever since I modded it. I only did the one channel at first just in case I screwed it up. And because I figured I'd only ever be charging one battery at a time. And, uh, well, that was wrong, obviously. But here we are. 
And I feel like it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You shouldn't mod your charger. If you buy a charger and it doesn't do what you want it to do, it's not the right charger for the application. I already know that. I, um, I don't wanna buy another charger. I have a, I'm not a professional, I just have a vague idea of what I'm doing. So don't, I don't recommend you do this at home. Hopefully I don't have to make a follow-up to this video titled How Not To Do This. Like, you know, my Game Boy Pocket I did the other day. It's Tindy's Wires. Here, there was a glob of solder on my iron. Just fell off, and that was still molten when I grabbed it. What the fuck? <laughs> that was interesting. All right, feed all three of those through there, and then we'll just do this one at a time. I'll do get these out of the way so I can tin these because this is probably lead free solder oh, I'm gonna need to bump the heat up for this I usually solder at about 300 degrees Celsius but these are some real thick meaty planes so I'm bumping my iron up to looks like 374 is what I went with oh yeah that's much better Ooh, that take a while to solidify. And my solder joints are gonna look real crusty and real nasty because I'm mixing leaded and unleaded solder. But electrically should be fine. Should add some flux to this arrangement. side bigger to gob better to job something like that you can tell I keep this thing on a desk where my cat hangs out because there's cat hair in it Maybe I should have trimmed these just a little bit. Oh well, it'll be fine. I like how that one came out so much better. All right. 
turn my iron back down. And we should be done. Just gotta push those up and out of the way of the springs. And it's not perfect. Ideally, I should have these extending past and then just like coming out the back or something, or hell, even coming out the front. There's probably more room up here. Uh, aside from the buttons or side, I don't know. Either way, better than having this mechanical spring in the way, which by the way, these rely on the rails on the back, so. Oh shoot, I forgot about this. Okay. So it has to be next to the spring, but parallel with it. In this particular case, I just pull the wire out and I'll put it back in later. my sticker oh no my warranty my precious my precious warranty So that should be exactly what I want. All right, let's uh, pop a battery out of here again and just test it and make sure. See, now it's hard to get that in there because the plug gets in the way. Fully maxing that out. I mean, it still works. I just have to move the plug out of the way first. And good, all the channels still work. So let's pop this back in there. And I know I do get a lot of questions on this too. I do actually already have a video on my YouTube channel. It just doesn't have these modifications like the uh, banana plugs for like the style connector or um, do I have that backwards? I do have that backwards, but or these wheels here. I, I, I am planning on doing another, another video eventually. I am working on a new revision of this thing uh, so that I 
to, to, to solve some of the pitfalls I have with this model. Um, but that's not coming for a while. But anyway, search my channel. It's there. I promise all the source files to build your own. Okay, so now I guess let's talk about some of the adapters that I've built. So I made this sketchy looking thing here. Let me zoom out a little. And this is just the female version of that plug. Plugs in there. Oh no, oh there we go. Just occurred to me I never actually tested these connectors. There we go. Uh, and on the other end of this plug, it's just a battery plug soldered to one of these like IC hooks and then an alligator clip. And then same thing on the other side, IC hook and alligator clip. Ideally, I'd love to make three more of these things, but I don't have enough alligator clips or IC hooks to do it. I could, since I'm specifically testing these batteries, I could just do them with IC hooks. I think, I think I only have enough to make one of these, maybe two not the three that I want. So ultimately for testing these batteries, I'm just gonna solder these batteries connectors on. It's no big deal. Uh, I also have, um, I already showed you the Game Boy Advance SP adapter that I made this bad boy. And then I've got on here, I just left it on the battery, a Game Boy Micro plug to that plug again. So we can plug it in. These Game Boy Micro batteries and use that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there we go. I hope this satisfies some of your curiosities. I hope this entertained. I hope that answered some of your questions. Um, I have no idea if where I got this charger, if the seller still sells them. If so, I'll post a link. If not, here's the model number. You can search it up. But again, there are better chargers that I recommend. This I, I bought this because it was cheap. And with most things in life, you get what you pay for. It does work for my purposes, but again, I just I just got finished. I just finished a video modifying it to make it work better for my purposes. So I should have just bought a better charger in the first place. And no, there's nothing wrong with the screen. I just drew in Sharpie 2.85. As a reminder that the low voltage cutoff on the test mode is 2.85 volts. I later found a silver Sharpie, wrote it in a better place. Um, but there we go. Thanks for watching guys. Have a fantastic night. Uh, stay safe, wash your hands, etc, etc. Right, thought I was done. Uh, just want to make a quick addendum. Forgive the shaky camera here, but I just want to I just want to talk about a few features of the charger real quick and show that it's working on my four batteries here. Uh, so one thing that I forgot to mention, and I'm going to mention it first off just before I forget because it really chaps my hide. When you plug in a battery, it defaults to charging the charge function at 500 milliamp hours. You have to hit the current button and cycle through the list to change it. But if you try and charge nickel metal hydride, triple uh, a batteries at 500 milliamps you're going to cook them these i'm testing at 300 milliamps even though i could probably test at 700 or uh, at least 500 but i just want to be on the safe side 300 is a good number preferred 100 but that's as far as it goes so let's take a look at the different channels here we have channel one it's currently running a normal test the battery is at 4.13 volts how the normal test mode works is it's going to charge the battery up to the full 4.2 voltage and then it's going to put a constant uh, 300 milliamp load on the battery until the battery voltage reaches 2.85. It's going to time how long that takes and use that to calculate the milliamp hours and then it's going to charge the battery up again if you leave it in long enough. Uh, but it also has the timer there so you can see how long the total test is taking and the internal resistance of the battery and uh, each channel is separate each battery is at a different voltage because I plugged them all in at different times and because some of them were 0.02 volts higher or lower or whatever uh, but 
There is also, if you hold the mode button, you could cycle through the tests. The default is charged there. Um, that's what happens when you plug it in. It'll take the battery up to 4.2 volts or 1.5 if it's nickel metal hydride. There's fast test, which is the same as normal test, except it does not charge the battery up first, and then normal test. I want to do a full charge test. Then you can also cycle through the current. It defaults to 500 milliamps, but you can also select 700, 1000, or my preference, 300 milliamps. And uh, otherwise, if you leave it alone long enough, it'll stop blinking and it'll actually start the test. And then, there we go, I'm just going to let it cycle through all four of these. Probably going to put three or four cycles on each of these batteries to test them out. Each cycle is probably going to take about five and a half hours. Um, so I'll check them again in the morning. But uh, there we go. And with these batteries, it's nice because you can actually just record on straight on them, just right on them with a Sharpie or something. But anyway, that's for uh, another video at this point. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.